Hi, welcome back to another episode of Algebra in Words. In this episode, we're going to be looking at proportion and variation and inverse variation. If you're following along with the Rocks World Krieger textbook, we'll be looking at section 7.7. .7. And if you're following along in my Algebra in Words book, you can follow along with that on page 122. So this video is going to be broken up into two sections. The first we're going to look at just straight proportionality like I have on the board. And then we're going to look at what's known as variation. Variation and proportionality I cover in Algebra and Words 2 on page 122. Also in the Rocks World book, all of this will be in section 7.7. .7. So anyway, let's get started and look at what I have on the board. So what I have on the board to start off is two right triangles. And if you notice, they are both uh, right triangles, but one of them small and one of them's big. And let's assume that they are known as similar triangles. Similar triangles means automatically that the sides are proportional. So even though the sides, uh, even though the sizes are different, the sides of one side to the other side, for example, A to A, are proportional. <clears throat> so, and that's. More geometry, that's a whole separate issue, but basically if the angles are the same, the side can be proportional even if the side, even if the sizes of the triangles are different. But anyway, assuming that they are similar and that they are proportional, we can solve for one unknown side if we know the lengths of three other related sides. But before we calculate, I want to take a look at how to set up a proportion on the board. So first of all, proportions come from ratios, and a ratio is simply one unit in relation to another unit, and we usually show that just as one fraction where the numerator is one unit and the denominator is another unit. And if we set that equal to another ratio where the units are the same in the numerator and denominator, then we have a proportion. Now, when you have um, four units like we have here, side A, side B, and side C, and then also in the bigger triangle, side A, B, and C again, then we, there's two ways that we can set up the proportion. One way is, if you notice up top, I have A, side A of the small triangle over side B of the small triangle equal to side A of the big triangle over side B of the big triangle. That's one way to set up the proportion, okay? If you notice in this case, this ratio has the units of the small triangle only, and the right fraction or ratio has the units of the big triangle. However, if we look below, there's another way that we can set up a proportion to solve for the same things. Except in this case, I have only the A's in the left ratio, where I have the small over the big, and then equal to the ratio which has only the B's, where we have the small in the top and side B of the big triangle in the bottom. Okay? So in this case, looking across the tops is both smalls, and looking across the bottom is both B's, uh, both um, bigs. So again, there's two ways that you can set it up to solve for the same thing. <clears throat> um, again, looking at the top, the smalls are both in the left ratio and the bigs are both in the right ratio and across the top are the A's and across the bottom are the B's. Just randomly choosing, let's uh, use this proportion to do a little, to solve for side B of the small triangle which is unknown. So if you notice the given information I put in already is Side A has a length of 5 for the small triangle. Side B of the small triangle is unknown. Side A of the big triangle is known as 8. And side B of the big triangle is 24. So what I did is, took all the information and I put it into this proportion. So what is A of the small triangle? 5. What is B, what is A of the big triangle? It's 8. So I put that here. And then what is B, side B of the big triangle? That we don't know yet. So that has a question mark, and I just left that as variable B. You could use X, but I left it as B. 
And then what is the length of B of the big triangle? That's 24, so we put that in here. And to solve is very easy in this case because there's only one fraction on the left, one fraction on the right. And if you remember from when we did solving uh, rational equations, if there's one fraction on the left and one on the right, you can simply cross multiply to ultimately get to the end. So we're going to cross multiply. And if we do 5 times 24, we get 120 equal to 8 times B, which is 8B. And now all we have to do is divide both sides by coefficient 8. And we get 15 equals the length of side B of the small triangle. And that's the answer, but let's just look at one more thing to make sure it makes sense. Let's look back at this proportion. And this one happens to just work out this way because there's no decimals involved. There could be decimals or fractions involved. But regardless, let's look at what you need to get from 8 to 24. You would multiply by 3, right? Well, we should have to multiply the same factor times the numerator to get to the answer for the numerator of this fraction. So if this times 3 is 24, what is 5 times 3? 15. And that's what we got for side B of the small triangle. So that makes sense. So that's pretty much all I have there for proportions. That's basically just setting up one ratio equal to another. When you have one fraction equal to another, it's a proportion. Cross multiply, and you can solve for your variable. So I'm going to pause the video, and then we're going to look at the next subject, which is variation. Okay, we're back. So let's talk about variation, and sometimes it's known as proportionality, but let's talk about variation. They're the same thing. There's two types of variation. There's variation and there's inverse variation. And the concept is pretty simple. So I have a basic equation on the board, uh, an equation, a formula that we're somewhat familiar with from before, which is rate is equal to distance over time. And you could think of distance over time like miles per hour. And I also have it in short form, r is equal to d over t. Variation is very simple. It means when you have one variable on the left and one variable on the right in the numerator, like this, it means that as the variable on the right in the numerator goes up, the variable on the left also goes up proportionally. That's all that that means. Then we can also have a case where it's sort of the reverse. A variable on the left and a variable in the denominator on the right or on the other side. And when the, de when the variable in the denominator goes up, the variable on the left goes down and vice versa. So if this went down, it would make this variable go up. And that makes sense because of where it is in the fraction. So anyway, that can be tracked on graphs. And the relevance of this is this brings you closer to real world situations and real world data. So if you were in a scientific situation or you, you had data for a lab or a psychological study or economics or anything, um, these types of proportionalities and variations would play a role. Because you'd be using, using and plotting real data on a graph and then you might be charting to see if when this variable representing some amount goes up, what happens to the other. So if you're using the Roxwell Krieger book, then if you're in section 7.7, .7, particularly starting on page 493, you might see this sort of generic formula or equation. And so let's start off by talking about this. Y equals KX, okay? And this, this formula is to exhibit variation, direct variation. That means as Okay, notice that y and x are both in the numerators of each side. Yes, there's not a fraction, but think of them as being written over 1. And what it means is, as x goes up, y goes up. Or as x goes down, y goes down. And it could obviously be the opposite. But the reason why we say kind of in terms of x is because um, x would, might represent the independent variable, and then y would be the dependent variable, y would, whatever the value of y would be, would be dependent on x. 
Okay, um, so anyway, this one exhibits direct proportionality. Also, if you're wondering, what does K represent? K is usually used to represent what's known as a proportionality constant. And what that means is, even as Y and X change, the value of X, the value of K, will remain the same. But K has another function too, and it's very specific from case to case. It can change, it can change from situation to situation. But if you're looking at just one set of data, K will always represent, will always be the same number, okay? And what I think of K as is a, a balancing factor, or a, I think of it as a compensation factor. As Y and X change, K keeps the left side equal to the right side always, okay? And we will use that, and I will show that when we do a couple examples. But before we do ex a couple examples, let's look at this case. This is y is equal to k over x. And in this case, the proportionality constant is in the numerator. And we should see that the variable x is in the denominator. This represents inverse proportionality. That means as x goes up, y goes down. And as x goes down, the value of y goes up. Okay, once again, k is a proportionality constant. It just keeps the balance from the left side to the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a problem on the board that relates to one that you might have to do using these, and we're going to solve it. Okay, so I have a problem on the board that looks like this. y equals 5, x equals 10, and what, we've, what, what we're going to do in the first step is to solve for k, the value of k. Once we know k, then we're going to solve a second step, which asks, what is y when x is 6? So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to be using this equation because we're going to be assuming that um, x and y are directly proportional in this case. <clears throat> so all we have to do is take the, the equation above, because we know they're proportional, and we're just going to substitute 5 in for y. Write in k because k is our unknown in this case, and times 10 for x. We're going to divide both sides by coefficient 10. Well, it's just a factor of 10 in this case. And 5 over 10 equals 1 half. So k equals 1 half in this case. Now we're going to go to step 2 of the problem, which says, what is y when x equals 6? So once again, we're going to take this equation, I'm just going to rewrite it, y equals kx, and we're going to substitute one half in for k, and y is our unknown, and we know um, x because they give that in step two. So we put six in for x, and now we're just going to multiply one half times six is three. So the answer to step 2 is y equals 3. The answer to step 1 is 1 half equals k. So I'm going to pause the video, and now we're going to look at a problem that deals with indirect or inverse variation. Okay, so I put another problem on the board, and this one is going to deal with indirect or inverse variation. And that means that we have to use this equation which is y equals to k over x. So all we have to do is start off with the given information. Let's start with step one. And what we want to do is find k when we know that y is 1 fourth and x is 32. So we're just going to set up this equation and plug in. So for y, we're putting in 1 fourth. And k is our unknown. And 32 in 4x. And we can cross multiply. Let's do 4 times k, which is 4k. 1 times 32 is 32. Divide both sides by coefficient 4. And 32 divided by 4 equals 8. So therefore we get k equals 8. 
And I'm just going to write that up here. Because we're going to use that in step two. And step two is, using k equals 8, what is y when x equals 8? So again, we're going to rewrite the starting formula. y equals k over x. And fill in whatever we have. So y is our unknown. We'll leave that as y. And k we determined was 8 from step 1. I'm just going to circle that. And x we know is given as 8. So this is pretty easy. What is y? 8 divided by 8. 8 over 8 is 1. So the answer is 1. And let's just kind of look at that to make sure it makes sense. <clears throat> um, for inverse variation, it means as x goes up, y should go down and vice versa. So does it make sense here where 32 is large and y is 1 fourth? Okay, yes. But then also, what about here? As x, from here to here, x goes down. 32 to 8, x goes down. So what do we expect y to do from 1 fourth? Go up or down? We expect it to go up, which it does proportionally, and so that makes sense. All right, and I'm going to pause the video because we're going to look at one other aspect of variation, which I'll explain in a second. And the last topic of variation we're going to look at is known as joint variation. Joint variation just means one variable on the left is equal to a number of factors on the right, and there's multiple factors of which when the product of them combined goes up, the variable on the left alone goes up. Or if the product of the variables on the right go down, likewise the variable on the left alone goes down. So all that means is there's more variables involved, which simulates a more real world situation. And again, we still have the k constant, which means it's like the uh, balancing factor or the compensation factor to keep the left side equal to the right side no matter what the variables would happen to be. Okay, so I have a problem on the board and it's similar to the problems we just did. It's a two-step problem. Step one is given when you know that z is 6 and y is 3 and x is 8, find k, the proportionality constant. So that's what we'll do first. Once we solve for k, we're going to use k for step 2, which says, what is z when x is 5 and y equals 7? So let's get started. So we're going to use our joint variation formula, and we're going to just plug in all the va values of the variables given. So for z, we know that 6, and k stays k because that's our unknown. x is 8, and y is 3. So we know that 8 times 3 is 24. So let's divide both sides by 24. And then we can get we can leave it as a fraction, which is 6 over 24 as 1 fourth. If you left it as a decimal, 0.25, that should be fine. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Okay, so now that we solved for k, I'm going to circle that. That's step one. Now we're going to use k to solve step two. Using k, what is z when x equals 5 and y equals 7? Let's plug in our given information. So we're going to put in, we're going to leave z as z. That's our unknown. And we know that k is 1 fourth. And we're given x equals 5 and y equals 7. Okay, so now we're just going to multiply. And if you leave it in fraction form, you could see it as 35 fourths. Or if you convert that to a decimal, you could get... 8.75. I like the improper fraction form. I'm going to leave it as that, but that answer is fine as well. 
So anyway, that concludes our video on proportionality and variation. Uh, if you found it helpful, please comment, rate, and share, and also click the bell so you can be alerted when new videos come out. And also check out other, my other platforms for other videos and problems, and I'll see you in the next video.